Uh, my name is uh, John Mark Clark. I'm the Vice President of Marketing at SoftNAS. Uh, I come to SoftNAS uh, from Citrix, where I worked for about uh, almost 19 years from the early days there. I actually worked for Rick. And then uh, I also left. I went to work for a small Israeli company called Kumernet and was their chief marketing officer. And uh, we actually were the company behind the open source project around KVM. So I launched uh, Kumernet. And I was really excited to actually join SoftNAS uh, because of this combination of leveraging open source projects and also virtualization. And in a similar vein to what Citrix did for uh, giving a open approach to actually accessing applications, SoftNAS is doing the same thing in the cloud for data. So that actually really attracted me to the company. And what I'm gonna do is just take you through the product as well as the market and some of the trends that we're seeing. And then I'll hand it off to the next presenter. So at the uh, market category level, I think it's important to understand, and some of the questions that you just asked point towards this. What SoftNAS actually is doing is we are actually leveraging our foundation as a cloud NAS and then expanding with our new additions of product into what we're calling a cloud data control and management platform. So from a cloud category perspective, we believe that there's a layer that's actually needed in cloud to ensure openness. And so cloud data control and management is focused on helping companies to have as open approach to cloud as possible and to actually avoid cloud vendor lock-in. So what we are in the cloud stack is that layer that allows a company to adopt a public cloud platform of their choice or a cross-cloud platform or multi-cloud. Question real quick. We've got a few clouds up there. Um, I noticed AWS has one of them but we've got a lot of similar or smaller niche service providers out there developing offerings that are S3 compatible. Could they be used with SoftNAS just like S3 could? Um, from, the, from the beginning, the company really focused on AWS and we were one of the first providers actually on the AWS marketplace. So theoretically, if another vendor is actually supporting S3, we support S3 natively, there'd be an opportunity for them to utilize SoftNAS Cloud as part of their, their project. Okay. Um, also, um, from an Azure perspective... Just real quick on that. We can basically interface with anything that is S3 compatible. Our user interface itself, when you're actually allocating storage, you can actually go in and do like a custom S3 configuration. So it's whatever storage you're using is S3 compatible. It doesn't have to be Azure. It doesn't have to be uh, AWS. We work with S3. It could be on VMware. It could be on VMware with an S3 attached. Right. It could be on premises. That's right. Correct. Right, exactly. Like I'm talking about SoftNAS from a cloud centric perspective as a pure software cloud native vendor, but the reality is the way that we actually have built our product, leveraging virtualization, it could be run on prem as well. Okay, so we focus where we see the most demand, and the most demand for the product actually has been from people that are migrating to the cloud, and there are two principal public cloud providers that they're really embracing, and that's AWS and then as well Azure. We've had a number of conversations and continue to with Google around Google Cloud, but right now where we see the majority of the demand has really been around AWS and around Azure. Um, what about Oracle? Uh, we have not actually uh, spent a great deal of time uh, focusing on Oracle or Oracle Cloud. So for GCP, you have coming soon. Are you just waiting for more demand before you release something? or We've been um, communicating with Google on a consistent basis for the last several years, but the reality is we respond to our customer demand, and to this day, we just have a massive number of companies that are coming to us looking for AWS, and increasingly, actually, we're seeing a tremendous amount of adoption around Azure. One thing I, I say on this point is that um, a lot of companies say that or look at the magic quadrant before they actually decide to act on a certain cloud uh, platform. Uh, but if you were a customer, you would normally think that, you know, I want to future-proof my technology, and if you're planning to be multi-cloud, you would want your product that you go for to be able to support it from day one, not wait until someone decides that you know, it should be given importance. Right. So why don't you actually provide that support right from the start for the various clouds available? Rick, do you want to comment? Yeah. So the reason that uh, we're focused on AWS and Azure, uh, your point's well taken, uh, our priority from a business perspective is getting profitable. We're close to that, and so we've had to prioritize focusing where we see the majority of the business today to, you know, to get profitable and grow as fast as we can. 
uh, while we're still investing in these other platforms. So it's just a matter of, of resources and priority ultimately for us right now. Not the trade-offs we want to make, but the trade-offs we, we, we're faced with. Um, in fact, towards that end, just to give you a little bit of background on what we see and what the trends are when people come to us, typically when a company actually contacts SoftNAS, uh, I kind of kid around sometimes and say we're like the Ghostbusters of the cloud. They've already selected a public cloud platform and they've started to do some type of migration of data and apps, but they encounter a problem, a serious problem that's impeding the success of their project. So they contact us. Most of the time, it falls into one of these areas. Either they've underestimated the file service aspect of moving to the cloud, and they start to try and do a project where they're creating their own file system, and they spend a lot of time and energy on it and money, and then it fails. And they call us up and say, wow, you know, CloudNAS has got quite a robust set of services that we need to actually take into consideration. Can you help us? Um, as well, some companies move to the cloud and they think that for all of their use cases that available cloud file services are going to be adequate. So EFS comes to mind. We have a large number of customers that contact us and they say, we started using EFS and we began to have a real problem with regard to IO performance degradation. So they contact us and they actually need a solution for these. They're midway going into the cloud. Um, we also have um, customers that contact us for a range of other issues. It could be someone who says, I want to go to the cloud, but I'm finding when I take a look at block and object storage, if I have to go all block, the cost economics are just not there. It's too expensive to leverage full block. We have other people that contact us, and they'll have issues with regard to just performance. They've moved their data, their apps into the, into the cloud, and their users are complaining and rebelling. If they're a SaaS vendor, they have customers that are paying revenue. We have a customer actually that's um, moving all of the physical newspapers from various circulations into a cloud model and digitally transforming. Millions and millions of files. If that individual who's a subscriber to that SaaS service can't get access to that paper when they're sitting on vacation, they're gonna cancel their subscription. So the performance degradation and cost are two critical areas. Um, and then as well, as Rick highlighted, we're seeing now a advent of IoT and machine learning and analytics use cases where people really don't just want to move the data into the cloud, they want to act on it. So they really want to be able to bring all their data in, not just file data, and then homogenize that data so they can actually utilize it for analytics and for data as a service. So that's why we've actually gone from this model of a cloud NAS into a cloud data control and management platform with full integration features. But this, this almost sounds like um, you do, you know, you solve issues in migrating, and you solve issues when you know, basically changing whatever the customer has into the cloud. So this almost sounds like a consulting practice instead of a technical solution. Is that what you offer with the product? Do you do a lot of consulting? That's actually a great question because the reality is as I go into the product, you're going to see this more and more. Uh, you know, Rick was a CTO at Citrix. Adam was an early engineer at Citrix. I mean, basically what SoftNAS has built, and that's why I said we built for data what Citrix did with regard to desktop virtualization platform. This is a really robust platform. We're a small company, so the reality is right now we're teaming with AWS and Microsoft, but we have a partner channel and it's we need to we're finding the most traction among global systems integrators or people that see the services role that's needed to actually do this so that's a, a very very um, uh, correct question um, also one point too to make is that we are not about redesigning or redeveloping applications we're about literally allowing an individual the choice to move to the cloud and use their existing data and applications I just want to make sure that points clear uh, yeah, I'm understanding that uh, your focus is mainly focused on migrating data from on-premises to the cloud, but multi-cloud is the, is the key these days. So do you also support migration or you know, uh, relocation of data across different clouds and, yes. ba and back to the on-premises if needed? Yep. Yes, yeah, Adam's going to go into really deep technical detail on this topic, but the reality is that we believe that for a cloud data control and management layer to be effective, you have to be able to actually rapidly move data into the cloud. That's why we're talking about ultra fast. But then as well, you have to be able to do that from multiple points. There's data all over. And once that data is in the cloud, you should be able to move that data across cloud. 
basically you enable data mobility yes. regardless of the so so are the main types of uh, customer challenges you see with databases and blob storage is that what you're where you're mainly called in to help? Well, you're going to hear more detail about what we do to actually enhance the performance of the object storage, but the major problem with object storage is just that. You get lower costs, but at the price of performance. So what we've done is we have technologies called ObjFast and Object Packer that accelerate and that actually um, optimize object storage, giving you near block level performance. So that's one primary um, point. So uh, we just actually released our SoftNAS Cloud 4 product at the end of May. Um, up until then, we had one product. We still have one product, but now we have three additions. So what we did effectively was a product line extension. We interviewed all of our customers, and what we gleaned from them were 18 different discrete jobs that they're actually focused on doing, that they're having problems doing, moving data and apps into the cloud. So we came out with these three products. SoftNAS Cloud Enterprise is our Cloud NAS product. SoftNAS, SoftNAS Cloud Platinum is the addition of our product that's focused on hybrid cloud data platform focused work. And then, as, as we've talked about a little bit around cloud data backup and archival, we teamed with Veeam last year. They don't have native support for object storage. And so what we've done is we work with them to actually optimize an addition of our product essentials focused on Veeam cloud backup and data archival where we're basically a target in the cloud for Veeam backups. Okay. Um, sorry, don't mean to interrupt. Isn't um, native cloud backup you know, tiering an upcoming feature for Veeam and how does that affect your partnership with them? Um, it's actually, uh, we were just at Veeam on in Chicago and we had just a you know, plethora of people come to our booth and um, most of those people actually are, are on-prem oriented and they're just starting now to move to the cloud. So we actually were there talking to people who are looking at how they can leverage Veeam's 321. And Veeam has talked about support for object storage, but there have been some delays in that. So last year when our engineering team collaborated with theirs, it was really around um, optimizing their full synthet synthetic backup. And um, we continue to actually focus on that. So um, we're, we're adding, as you're seeing here, more and more functionality. And uh, so we'll continue to engage with Veeam and uh, even as they advance their, their product roadmap. Good question. Um, so core functionality that we released in May is around our smart tiers. So in a nutshell, that is the uh, granular policy-based storage auto tiering capability between block and object. Ultrafast, which handles latency and traffic congestion around moving data really rapidly into a cloud or out of a cloud to another uh, point. Lift and shift, which is this automation capability for literally live migrating data from uh, a physical data center on-prem into a cloud. And then our flex files, which leverages this second open source project that we're built on. I think Rick mentioned it, but um, our cloud NAS product is, SoftNAS Cloud, is based on the open ZFS file system. So there's two fundamental open source projects, ZFS and then um, NiFi. And NiFi is what gives us the ability around flex files to do the data integration, the transformation, the aggregation of not just file data, but 24 different types. So let, me, let me see if I get this correctly. So you're running ZFS in public cloud virtual machines. How do you do caching both the Zill and the Arc? Rick or Adam? How do we do caching? Yeah, caching Zill, caching Arc. Yeah, so we uh, leverage for the ZFS caching the Arc, okay, in, in the memory. And then there's the L2 Arc, which you can do a direct attached uh, SSD if you've got it on the VM. And then the Zill is for your write, write log. Uh, oftentimes that'll be a high performance uh, uh, disk that's a, a network SAN disk, right? Those are for, prerequisites to, to have a performance. Yeah, yeah. If you and, and and you have to do that because you also have HA failover involved, right? So we handle all that for you with uh, ZFS. Okay. So um, as I said, we've focused our additions of the one product of SoftNAS Cloud on um, very specific jobs to be done. So. Cloud Enterprise has been historically the product that we've had in the market. The products uh, available on both marketplaces and, and as well people can contact us to purchase a buy your own license. We'll go into more detail on that. Um, but Cloud Enterprise has really been focused on primary storage 
As we've talked about, a lot of SaaS vendors are realizing they're hitting the wall with regard to their business models. They can't actually scale their subscriber bases with physical on-prem data centers, and they're trying to move into the cloud. So they come to us to help them move these SaaS applications into the cloud. Other companies come to us because they have run the business applications that they have they don't have the budget or, the, or plans to redevelop, redesign in the near term, and they want to run those applications in the cloud, leveraging uh, 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 file, uh, file services that they're dependent on. Um, so Cloud Enterprise is focused on primary storage, hot data. What we did with Cloud Platinum is we introduced a, a hybrid cloud data platform. And so uh, SoftNAS Cloud um, Platinum is really focused on those enterprises that are looking not just for a cloud NAS, but they're actually looking for something that supports any kind of data on any cloud. It's our most robust product edition. It incorporates all the functionality of the other editions. And then the third edition is our Cloud Essentials. And SoftNAS Cloud Essentials is really tailored to addressing the challenges around Veeam synthetic full backups, which we're going to go into more detail around um, and how we've solved. SoftNAS Cloud Enterprise built on, on OpenZFS, what we've done is as the product has matured and it's really matured, we've tested it beyond 16 petabytes. So we have customers that are running massive sets of data and applications in the cloud. We built on top of uh, the ZFS platform and matured our, our enterprise edition. So we support high availability, we support encryption, uh, we support um, snapshotting. It's a very, very robust platform. Um, this slide is intended to just show you that we're pure software. So we're virtualization technology, leveraging these open source projects and other technologies around security. And so what we're able to do is allow an, ind an individual company to just move their data and applications into the cloud of their choice and run that as a private and a dedicated environment. That's really important because that's very different than when you're actually leveraging a shared or multi-tenant file service in the cloud from a performance and a, and a customization, configuration, and cost perspective. As you see here, what we allow is you can actually, uh, we have typically um, people that come to us are storage architects, cloud architects, they're people that are designing environments, and what they want to do on a project-by-project -project basis is they want to select the instance type uh, that actually meets the best needs for their application or data in terms of performance and cost. So with a private and dedicated SoftNAS Cloud Enterprise environment, you can do that. You can choose block or object. You can choose it based on the particular project that you're working on. It gives you the, the most flexibility possible. Some of the advantages of a private, when I say private, I'm not talking private cloud, I'm talking dedicated. Like when I drive home, I pull into my dedicated parking garage. When I go to the Miami airport, I have to fight to find a spot to park. That would be a shared multi-tenant service. So the advantages of a private cloud NAS over a shared file service are numerous. Um, as I said, you can actually customize on a project by project basis so that you optimize performance and cost. Also, you actually have full control of your data. So there's an ability to totally protect the data. And so when I made the comment earlier about people coming to us who've actually moved to EFS and then found that it actually had shortcomings, these are actually the underpinnings of why there's a difference between what we're doing and what EFS does and why people come to us. What, they what's need EFS? Elastic file services oh, from, yeah. from AFS. Uh, many people also actually will, will start out if they're very open source oriented, utilizing other technologies like Gluster. So we are an enterprise class cloud NAS and now a cloud data control and management solution. Um, SoftNAS Cloud Platinum, as I said, has all the functionality of our enterprise edition, so all the cloud NAS, plus all of this, this functionality. Just so you all know, we spent the last three years actually doing the engineering work to get to this point. So this release of Platinum is a big deal for our company, a huge deal for SoftNAS. Um, essentials, really you just need to understand that Essentials is focused exclusively on leveraging object storage. So this is really focused on solving the problem with uh, Veeam's not having support for native object storage, and as well, the challenge from a performance perspective of doing full synthetic backups of Veeam into cloud. 
And then finally, just a final point. So at the end of the day, what we're actually assisting people with is, with our ultra-fast technology, it's allowing people to move their data into the cloud and across clouds 20 times faster, which is crucial. If you're using cloud, you're using World Wide Web, you're using internet, and you've got all the inherent limitations of, of TCP IP. So we address that. Also, we're not about redesigning and redeveloping, so we cut the actual migration time up to 90% by just allowing an organization to use current data and applications and move it into the cloud. Also, because of what we're doing with our smart tiering, it's actually cutting the public cloud storage costs by up to two-thirds, and we're going to go into that next and show, showing you some detail there. And then moving from a focus on cloud NAS and file files into data, actually what we've done with NIFI is expanded to 24 plus different data types that we support. So all of the most demanding um, integration projects around IoT can be solved using SoftNAS Cloud Platinum Edition. So um, any questions before I turn it over to the next presenter? I have a question. Um, so I, I have a bit of a trouble to get the clear message. So I'm thinking about the education for your customers. Uh, so um, we have, uh, from education for our customers, we have a variety of different tools and resources. We're definitely going to be using this, um, this video and the, and the feedback from you as a resource. We, have, we just overhauled our website. We have a great deal of information up on the website. There's a very good uh, SoftNAS Cloud Platinum Edition data sheet that goes into detail. Uh, we also have solution architects. So one of the things that really sets us apart is that we care about companies' success moving to the cloud 100%. We're cloud native. We have no hardware or, uh, or, or um, other focus than cloud. So when someone contacts us, we're actually guaranteed we're up to the hilt in their success. And our support organization is relentless in actually solving cloud problems. And I think, and Adam and, and Rick can comment on it, but I believe that we probably handled more cloud migration projects in the last six years than about any other company on the planet. So we have a massive amount of cloud knowledge within SoftNest. Yeah. The other thing, uh, we do offer custom training and standard training. So for customers that need to get trained, a lot of customers are new to the cloud. The cloud is, I mean, it seems like it's old to us because it's been around. We've been doing it five or six years now. But for a lot of companies, the cloud's brand new, right? So we bring a lot of expertise to the table to help companies. And we also provide some uh, training services as well. And then finally, one of the primary ways that people actually test our product is we have a free trial. So we have how-to videos, we have a free trial. You can free trial any of the additions that I've mentioned. Um, there's also on Microsoft Azure, there's a test drive of the product. Um, so there's a wide variety of ways to get hands-on with the product. In addition to that too, we've actually got a developer edition which is free. So for like DevOps, and we give you 250 gigabytes. So when you think about, and we'll be going into a lot more of this, you click down soon. If, if people want to go out and try it, we have a developer edition that allow you to set up and configure you know, almost every feature that we have, including like DevOps uh, proof of concepts with smaller amounts of data that you can actually go and set up a hybrid environment. We offer that up to 250 gig. You know, so we are very focused in addition to the free trials to giving the DevOps something that they can actually go out and kick the tires and learn before they actually go into production. Is it, so with both so, of the, is it fully featured though? Yes, yeah, it's, it's fully, fully featured. featured. Um, the, the limitation we put on it is 250 gigabyte capacity, but if you're working on a you know, two petabyte deal, we'll give you that 250 you know, gig capacity to, to learn about the product, how to set it up, build the flex files flows for your actual, actual production environment. For oh. how long a period do you give I'm that? sorry? It's for how long? It's free. Free. No, so, so limit. no limit. If you go out to the Azure marketplace, the AWS marketplace today, and search SoftNAS developer, well, it's free from the SoftNAS perspective. You pay for the Azure or the AWS cost, but the SoftNAS portion of the software, if that's what you're asking, it's free for unlimited use with the 250 uh, gigabyte capacity. What about HA capabilities? What's that? HA capabilities? Uh, this, there are enterprise HA capability is not supported. That's the one feature that's not in there. Okay, but you can set that up with the free 30-day free trial. 
Yeah. So, and we, we limited it because the, the goal of the developer edition is to help the DevOps teams come up to speed and, and test and develop, not put in the DevOps uh, version into production. Right. So then what is your, do you have an SMB story here and do you hear much from them and what do you say to them when they ask, what do you have, you know, for me and my operations? In fact, what, what I'd like to do is let me hand it off to John Bedrick because we're going to talk now about actually how the product is commercialized and you'll get a good feel for how an SMB versus an enterprise can consume the product. Okay. One last question. Uh, you have this developer edition, but you don't have like a community edition, like uh, for example, where portions of the code are uh, open source and, and developers can contribute to it, right? That is absolutely part of the plan going forward. You, you'll see once I go into our Flex Files discussion where we kind of click down more technical, there's already a NIFI community out there. We see that people are going to start building a lot more of flows and processors that are oriented towards the problems we're trying to solve. And that'll be the kind of the, the jumping off point for the soft NAS NIFI community or the data you know, uh, fabric you know, type but, of community. But you're not, not opening portions of the, of the code, of the uh, proprietary soft NAS code for the community because other, other vendors not in this specific uh, uh, niche they do something like that. They they keep right. portion of their soft software open so that they allow for co contributors. Right. Yeah. To yeah. So we we're a contributor to OpenZFS, ZFS on Linux, as well as NiFi. Uh, but the, right now, there's no plan to open source the proprietary portions of our product that we're using to compete with today. Yep. And also to, to answer your question about uh, SMB, I mean the reality is if you look at our customer install base. It's more the use case that actually drives someone uh, purchasing SoftNAS Cloud than it is the size of the company. So we have companies like law firms that the lawyers give depositions and they have to go into court and they need to have access to the deposition data. And if they can't get to that data from the cloud fast and have high performance, it's going to impact actually their billable hours. We have, as I said, a company that comes to mind the one that's transforming physical circulations and newspapers into digital. Not a huge company. We have, as Rick said, media companies that are really very small companies, but they actually are dealing with massive amounts of file data. And so uh, we don't have an industrial dependency or really a company size. It's more a use case and a problem with someone going to the cloud.